What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host, um, episode 99. 99 episodes uh, of I'll Call You Right Back podcast, and uh, we're growing like a weed, um, but... I'm excited about this. We got a lot of cool stuff coming up for this week. Uh, First things first, though, um, next week I will be doing a holiday episode. Um, It will be a special episode. It's not going to be episode 100, but it's going to be, you know, a special holiday episode. Uh, So uh, I'm not going to give that a number. Maybe I'll give that number... Yeah, I'm not even going to number it. It's just going to be the holiday episode. And uh, I'm going to talk about Christmas. I'm going to talk about why I love it. I'm going to talk about my favorite Christmas movies and, uh, you know, some other shit. But just a heads up, that's what's coming next week. Uh, Anyway, Christmas is coming up and I'm very excited. Uh, I'm always excited about Christmas because, you know, I I just like, I like the... I like the time of the year. You know, I like the lights. I like the decorations. Um, I like Halloween more, but Christmas is definitely my favorite. I like the spirit. I like all the stuff around Halloween more. But uh, as far as decorations, um, I'm pumped to put up a Christmas tree. I'll tell you that. Uh, I just made a brand new roast of coffee, Daltone Roast Coffee. This is my fourth roast, and uh, it's called Christmas Spirit, speaking of that. And uh, that will be releasing very soon. So, uh, you know, follow the Instagram, at I'll Call You Right Back. Uh, I'm always putting out cool shit. And this coffee is very, very good. It is a dark Sumatra and a medium Rwanda. And it's a blend of both. And uh, if you guys are new to the podcast, uh, I like to make coffee. You know, this is a new thing that has happened this year. And uh, I've been I've been really, really enjoying it. Uh, coffee seems to be my IPAs. You know what I mean? People get all weird about beers. And, uh, you know, I don't give a shit about beers, but I really enjoy some coffee. And, uh, the fact that, uh, I've been able to create my own roast over the last year, actually I create four of them and, uh, them be a success with, uh, the people that have purchased them, you know, it makes me feel great about it. And, uh, this is another great one. So that's going to be coming very soon. Uh, I probably got maybe like four. 14 pounds, pounds on deck, um, you know, pounds on deck, you know, I got that work. So, uh, if you want any of that, throw me a DM and uh, I'll put one aside for you, but, uh, I'm excited about it. It is good. We had, uh, me and my wife were sitting there last night and we tested it out and, uh, it's really good. You know, like it's interesting how different, uh, different coffees could taste, you know what I mean? But, uh, I'm pumped about it. Anyway, the reason that everyone is here, we have a very, very great podcast this week coming up. Uh, I did a podcast with Dan Grigoris, and uh, Dan is an artist. Um, Yeah, he's an artist. Uh, I first came across Dan at the I Made It Market last year, and uh, he creates... So now follow me here. Dan creates alternative film and TV posters using a style he's developed over the last several years. Uh, like he searches all over to find significant items from movies and TV and, uh, manipulates them into the one single image that encapsulates the entire film or show. Um, you know, the first, the first piece of his that I seen was, uh, some paint cans and, uh, some ornaments and some micro machines. And, uh, I looked under it and it just said home alone. And I knew that it meant home alone because of what it looked like. It looked identical. And, uh, that immediately caught my eye. So I went over to his booth and I just started flipping through all of his work. And, uh, he creates these like movie and TV posters out of items that he searches for, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll come across like, uh, like we, like in this episode, we talk about, I asked him, uh, what was one of the hardest things you had to come across? And, uh, he was saying that, uh, it was the recorder from evil dead Two. Uh, if you have ever seen evil dead two, there's a recorder in there and he wanted to make an evil Ted evil dead two poster, but you know, he doesn't sacrifice his, uh, his, uh, what's the word? What's the word? Uh, he doesn't shortcut it. He gets like the original shit and he creates these like insane images that, that touch on the exact, 
you know, the exact heartbeat of the movie. So like you see, you know, a bunch of burnt up jokers in a certain way and you know that that's the dark night and you see, you know, uh, some sunglasses and a white Russian and, uh, you know, you know that that's the big Lebowski and it's just like a really, really cool idea that, uh, that I thought was like super unique. I saw, all this shit at the I made it market. And like, I kind of went nuts because like, you know, he has a great taste in movies and, uh, you know, he did a lot of the movies that I love. And, uh, he goes by the name Baxter and the bear. And, uh, you could find him on Instagram at Baxter and the bear. And, uh, if you check out his stuff, like I posted it on the Instagram, uh, he has like, uh, Posters, Breaking Bad, Mean Girl, Shaun of the Dead, The Shining, The Office, you know, Home Alone, uh, uh, The Godfather, like uh, a Parks and Rec. You know, he does all these crazy ass things and uh, he does it in a way that, you know, you kind of are surprised because like when I look at these pieces, you know, it looks like the identical shit from the movie. And you you wonder, like, where the hell did you get a cricket bat? and a shovel like this and 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 you i mean i guess you get them anywhere really but like the way that he does it is what is incredible about it you know it looks it looks like like what it like like what it was in the movie you know uh, one of my favorites i think that he does is uh, a breaking bad poster and he has numerous ones of them but uh it's just the rv from breaking bad and like uh coming out of the top of the rv is some blue smoke and uh you know it's such like a simple cool uh like unique it's it's unique uh i don't know what other way to describe it but like in this episode we talk about how dan got into film how he kind of like created his own like you know his own way of doing you know, alternate movie and TV posters. I mean, people do all kinds of alternate movie TV posters, but, uh, you know, this is kind of like his own way of doing it. And, uh, it was a super great episode. Like I really, really enjoy movies and I really enjoyed like nerding out with him and talking about all kinds of movies. And, uh, you know, without further ado, episode 99 of I'll call you right back podcast with Dan Gregoris, AKA Baxter and the bear. Hello? It's very, very, it's, it's not everyone that I ask to do a podcast who's never done one before. They're uh-huh. like, man, I'm kind of nervous about it. Like, what are we going to talk about for like an hour and a half? Yeah. And you're like, I mean, this is, this is a little first datey. Yeah. It's first datey, but I'm pretty like, good at first dates, I think. But I think that, uh, <laughs> I think that we also have like a benefit because like I've spoken to you a couple of yeah, times yeah. and like, I kind of know, uh, so for like the people that are listening, like the background that I have with you is like. Uh, I went to that I made it market last year yeah. and uh your work immediately grabbed my eye. You cool. know, I was I was a big fan of it. Uh and I just thought it was super unique. Um I've never seen anything like that and I thought it was uh I just thought it was like a like kind of like a fresh take on things. Appreciate that, man. And it it, it was like a cool like uh kind of like very very like abstracty and I, I like movies like i'm a big movie guy yeah it looked I'm, I'm, I'm and that's that was after my wife made me get rid of a lot of them but uh <laughs> i'm a big movie guy so like obviously your shit was uh really really uh caught my eye are you cool with me asking you questions absolutely dude okay. ask whatever you want all right it's very very uh it's not even really like an interview like i tell people like a oh, podcast it's more just like a conversation <laughs> but yeah um so uh yeah where where are you from even so i'm from uh moon grew up in moon and then lived okay. in pittsburgh my whole life went to Pitt uh college and then moved to mount lebanon that's All right, so now. you've been here the whole time. Yeah, just been here. <laughs> well, that's good. So, uh, could I ask how old you are? Yeah, uh, I'm third, 
34. I have to think about it at this point. That's all right. I mean, yeah, I have to do the math. If you think about it, then you tend to not be a person that like is like dreading age. That's yeah. like, uh, I don't want to say the name. It's, it's a thing. I'm I, always like mildly surprised that I'm as old as I am. It's weird getting older. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm getting older too. I'm 29, and uh, I just. You know, it's weird to think about, like, I'm married, you know, Mm -hmm. we're we're looking for houses, and it's just, like, it's bizarre. Yeah. It's, like, a bizarre, because, like, (laughs) I've been with my wife for about seven years, and I don't know, it's just, like, it, it... it, it, like life is wild. Yeah. Uh, I went into school. I never really like lived on my own. Uh-huh. I was at my parents and then like me and her moved here and it's just like, we've been having our How long chapter have you been here. We've been here for, uh, I think it's September. It'll be like five years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Because honestly we got into this place at a very, very cheap rate yeah. and, uh, it's perfect. She works in, uh, Pittsburgh. So okay. she takes a bus right there Yeah, and, uh, I work in Washington. So like I just hop right on 79, 79 and like, yeah. you know, I I'm right there. So, <laughs> and this is also like kind of central, it's like kind of a central location to everywhere. Yeah. And we're, we're trying to like look for places now, but, uh, you know, we're trying to also decide like, you know, the trajectory of where we want our lives to be. Yeah. That's because, tough, man. I mean, if you're buying a house, you, you want to be all right with it. I've been in my place eight years. Where do you live at? Mount Lebanon. Oh yeah. Mount Lebanon. And, uh, I'm, I'm like, never, never change, never yeah. change anything. Just keep it. Keep you like the it there? I like it there. Yeah. I, uh, we could, we could do with more space at this point. We're yeah. like running out of. Yeah, I mean, out of room, but. and that and that's hard too, is because like yeah. I have a lot of shit. Yeah, you know, I've always <laughs> been like a collector uh, of just like things that I'll never. I'm one of them guys that goes to Barnes and Noble and buys like 15 books and like don't read them. Yeah, yeah. But I just have them for whenever. I just I bought the Goldfinch like two years ago. Just oh yeah, sitting on my sitting I, on my shelf. Man. I, know, I I like the way it looks. <laughs> you know, I just I like the way it looks. I, I I buy it in good intention to read it, but like yeah. You know, I'll get to it eventually yeah. when like the I apocalypse figure, like, happens. Ninety two years old, I'm I'm gonna be cracking you, open the goldfish. Yeah, and, like, yeah. What, like what what are you, like what are you gonna do when you're old? This is the like, time. You're gonna like my mom just <laughs> retired and uh my mom retired and like I call her I call my, my mom every, like almost every day after work and just like talk to her. She's like, uh, oh yeah. I like they just got a puppy. Uh-huh. So she's like, My life has been taken over by this puppy. And uh but other than that, like, I mean, you're retired. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like yeah. you just it, it's it's such like a bizarre idea to think like, oh, I have a whole day of of just of things enough. of yeah. my my own time. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, like you obviously, I, I just asked you before we started recording what you do for work and you said you restore f- films. Yeah. Like we're at a place, uh, we're a small studio. Uh, we do like film restoration, digitization, that kind of stuff. So it's a lot of like, a lot of variants actually. It's like you get home movies, you get, uh, stuff for documentaries, you get certain like indie guys. And then most of the time it's just. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Uh, you're just working on it. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird with like rights owners and stuff, but like every once in a while you're watching HBO, you're like, where do I know that from? I was yeah. like, oh yeah. Okay. I'm going to work. That's on. what that was. <laughs> now, like, is that something that you were kind of like thought about getting into or you just kind of ended up there? I, well, like I, I got in the film from like super young yeah. and it, it was just sort of like, I figured it out right away like and uh like film as far as watching or making film is film is in watching like just loved it loved it it was more it was more even like collecting the knowledge of stuff and like figuring Uh, out like when you first realize like there's actors and they're in different things and then there's directors and they make different things and it's like spotting the sort of like the the characteristics that are shared yeah yeah and 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 it was sort of like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a filmmaker. And then I went to Pitt and they had like, they had a film study side and then they had like production classes at filmmakers. Yeah. And I was just like, not meant to, to do the production side. Really? At all. Yeah. Like it, it was like a real good lesson of like, don't decide what you're going to do when you're <laughs> in so, first grade. <laughs> so like it, it, you, you wanted to, you wanted to make films, but like what, what was the parts that you disliked about? I, it, it was just the, 
it was like the 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 way that my brain is is wired and the way that I like to work. Oh uh, yeah. It's it's not in and it's not in that way and there's no it's like an industry without really a front door unless you're Oh you yeah. Know. You gotta so, know someone. So you gotta love it. You, and you gotta love it more than like stability and yeah and like <laughs> having like a, a a regular check. So it's it's like uh, finding this job was like kind of a a miracle. I I've been working there ten years. Oh really? Yeah. So wow. it's it, it's my really like third job out of college. But the first two were just I was a courier and then I I worked in a mail room. A bike courier? No, a, okay. a driving courier. I it was right around here too. It was like um delivering delivering stuff picking up picking up like copies of checks from uh, PNC banks wow. and the first day they were like uh it should be all right but some people see you with PNC bags yeah like what you have is worthless yeah uh but, people but they think might it's worth it. they might come after you and they were like one guy got hit with a pipe but Jesus. don't worry about it that was <laughs> Like <laughs> that was like one in a thousand, you know. I worked at a gas station uh, out of out of college. I worked there, and I worked overnight shifts sometimes. And they uh, they like brief you kind of. They're like, yeah. oh yeah, like it it is a possibility, yeah, uh, that someone could come in and like try to rob you. Like this is a procedure, and I'm just like, you're out of your damn mind. Like if someone comes in, I'm gonna just unlock everything and I'll be like, dude, I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette out back, and you just whatever you, you want some Turner's tea, <laughs> take all that with you. Like I ain't, I ain't worrying about all that. What, what did they say? Just give it to them, or no? They like, they said that uh, they said that uh, they were like, yeah, just give it to them, but. I think that there was like, you know, try to be like, no, I'm not going to give you these or I yeah. like lie and say like, <laughs> we don't have anything. It's all in there. And it's like, bro, like I, I would be a hundred percent transparent with them. Yeah. I'd be like, I don't know how to get in that safe, but there's, <laughs> there's rolls of quarters back there. I would just be real about it. But I mean, it's not worth your life. Yeah. Nah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially people think that you got money in them bags, it's, but it's just paper. Yeah. That's it. Just uh, copies. But whenever you were younger, you were into movies and stuff. Yeah, it was like... Um, How'd you do that? How, how'd that come into play? I don't, I don't know where it started. Um, like, my grandma would take us to movies, like, every Sunday. Me oh, my that's sister, the best. And it was like, yeah, it was just like, whatever was out. And uh, we would go see it, and you just, like, start start kind of like... I don't know. It's just like a collection of, of knowledge and stuff, like... You start um, to see things that really like make impressions on you. Yeah, and it's like there's realizing that there's stuff that's good and there's stuff that's not good. Like figuring yeah. out your way through it all, and and like I just wanted to watch like as much as I could. Oh yeah, and just what were you of, into like young? Like what was your favorite stuff? Uh I always like I I wasn't crazy about kids. Mo- like the first movie I saw twice was Home Alone. Uh, okay, that was probably my favorite for a little bit, but then like. After that, it was like I I wanted to see. I was nine when Pulp Fiction came out. I yeah, wanted I wanted. To, I wanted to see it. Like I was films. Like it wasn't yeah. just like like I watched all the you know Surf Ninjas and yeah, like Flight yeah. of the Navigator. But like one of my favorite movies of all time was Desperado. I've okay. Yeah, like, I watch it almost every day. <laughs> and my parents were cool to the point where like my brother's thirty five. Uh-huh. So he was able to watch this shit mm. and like they were like oh we could either try to shelter him and make yeah. him go to his room or whatever just we're just gonna see up. how yeah. yeah yeah so i i got opened up to it way early and my aunt and uncle that i spent an insane amount of time with they owned a video store okay so like i mean i was that was like literally from when i was born till probably i was like maybe six or seven yeah so it was just movies yeah. all the time coming in. Yeah. And like we lived in that golden era of like blockbuster and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's like it's weird to think kids now like don't know what that is. Yeah. Have a movie like have a have oh. a birthday party and rent a movie. Hundred yeah. percent. Friday nights, go get some blockbuster. Yeah, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, so were you into it to the point where like uh were you like the theatrical end of it, like in school? Like were you in plays and stuff like that? No, I was okay. Totally just like in my, it, it was like a, a a world unto myself. Yeah, like and even even like the the weirder like I was I, I would you, do you remember like film guides like Leonard Malton and Roger Ebert like they would put out these big like Bible sized books. Yeah, but like, I've never I remember them, but I've never read them. They, they're all they're all like just the ratings of movies, and I would just like look through that and just, uh, yeah. and just be like, oh wow, this is like four stars, this is two. Oh, uh, and in wow. the back they would have all the lists of like Academy Award nominees 
for like every year for best picture. Yeah. And, and back then, like, so yeah. like back then, are you into like the directors and stuff like that as far as like... Eventually, you know, like I would get there. See, yeah. I, I was not like that for yeah. some reason. Like uh, I have friends now that are like cinephiles yeah. and uh, they're like, oh, it's this director and this director and he does all these movies. But like, yeah. I was never like, I never got deep enough to like learn the directors. I knew you know, I knew the apps, I knew the entire script of movies yeah. just by off heart. And like, I knew of actors through like almost like a six degrees of Kevin Bacon, yeah. you know, just <laughs> shit like that. But I was never like, you know, I love all David Fincher movies. Like, yeah. I wasn't like seven and yeah. reading like a tour theory, but like, <laughs> but like I, I had like, my mom got me a entertainment weekly subscription when I was in third grade. Like I was wow. bringing it to school and stuff, but like, it wasn't something that I was like yeah. advertising. I wasn't like, ask me what the nineteen fifty nine best pictures were yeah. or whatever. Like, that's cool though. I mean, like, yeah. that's cool that you were into it. Like, uh, now were you uh, were they like cool with you watching like PG thirteen whenever you were younger? Yeah, I, I I don't think there was there yeah. wasn't any real restriction on PG thirteen. Like, I I remember seeing, I didn't see Pulp Fiction right when it came out, but yeah. I was like. <laughs> I was like 13 when I saw Goodfellas with my dad, and he was like excited to yeah show to you because it's in, in it. There's nothing in it that's that's super. If you aggressive. accept that, yeah, if you accept that your kid's not like seeing a guy get murdered and being like, oh, that, that looks kind of fun. Yeah, like I that that wasn't me. So I think they were like <laughs> they were cool with it. Yeah, and yeah, as long as it wasn't too like yeah, like something crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah, like Clockwork Orange or something like that. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Clockwork Orange came in middle I'll school for me. Okay, that came in middle school. Uh, but I don't know. It's it's interesting to think about like how much how much of like uh, my memories like consist of movies and like yeah, just watching yeah. movies on the weekends and like friends that were also into movies. Yeah. Like I was never a video game guy. I was more just like watching movies all the time. And uh, that's what like me and my brother would do. We'd watch the same movies over and over and yeah. over again. Just wear out the VHS. Copy wear it of, out. Yeah. Like uh, Blockbuster gave us our copy of Half Baked because like we watch <laughs> we we rented it so many times. Um, but whenever you were younger and you're like getting into movies and stuff like that, like were you also like artistic? Like um, I I like to to write a little bit and I like to draw yeah. and stuff. And there was always that that element to it. But I it was. It was something that I didn't really know how to like forward, you know, like I didn't know how to how to progress it to Yeah. Like as you you, you kinda like you're in third grade and you're you're like kinda good at drawing. Yeah, you know cartoons. you wanna do something, but you don't know like how or what and yet. then you're in like seventh grade and it's like I'm I'm still I'm probably worse at drawing at this point. Like <laughs> I'm regressing. So it, it's something that like it's something that I always felt kinda closed off to. Yeah. Like art class and stuff. It just never never really went anywhere like it, it only until later when it's like you, art art you could just do any like as yeah. long as you have an idea and you yeah just whatever you it, want like and it's, you you could fail at it completely and that's totally 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. yeah now in like uh deciding you know i always talk to people about like what they were like in high school and shit like that because yeah. i feel like it's an easy way to like kind of understand the way someone was yeah so like I mean, high school and everything like that, you're forced to try to figure out what you want to do with your life. Like, where are you at I, mentally? Man, I I just had I had like I'm the, I'm on this track where yeah. I'm going to I'm going to just study film and yeah. and So and you were all it. in it. I was all in it. Yeah. yeah, and then it wasn't until college where it was like the the studying side was was the thing that I Dislike. I realized that I liked about like oh, you it, liked it, it wasn't the making of it. It was like the oh. kind of taking a look at it and breaking it down and and trying to figure out like what does this mean and form an argument to say like this is what I kind of this is the structure I'm going to put on this thing. Yeah, and and this is how I'm going to like explain it to you. That's pretty that's, sick. Yeah, I guess. I mean, of, of the two talents of making or. <laughs> like or like learning analyzing them. yeah it's it's the less fun probably but that's all right it, it's I mean, the one that i i just responded to it because it, it is like a i i it's more of a puzzle rather than a like just do whatever you want like make the film that's you know in your heart or whatever i yeah i don't know that there's there's probably one that doesn't yeah i mean i i think about like how uh like i don't know if i would i don't know if i would enjoy i feel like i could 
fall in love with that. But anything that I enjoy, I try to like, I, I kind of get obsessed with it. Yeah. And I just like, you know, I either overkill it yep. or, or I just, I don't like it enough to want to keep Same going way. with it. Yeah. And, it, and, and I've done so many random ass things and yeah. tried to get into so many things and it, it, and it always seems like I'm indecisive and wishy-washy but it's like it's not that it's just yeah. like I gave it a fair shake yeah. and it just wasn't what I wanted yeah and uh you know things that I do enjoy like this podcast you know it's going still mm -hmm. I obviously like it yeah. enough but uh so so like in school while you're doing all these like uh while you're kind of in this mindset uh you said you were like you said you wrote a little bit did you write at all like were you writing movie scripts or anything uh, I was like working on stuff yeah. that just never just never felt like you start something and it just never goes anywhere. Yeah. And it's, it's just like a, it's a frustration of, of like, what, like, what, what am I going to do with this thing that I like? <laughs> yeah. It's pursue? almost like, could I, could I unbox this yeah. more? Yeah. Or do I just want to like move on to something that could be better? Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. It, it's, it's kind of like you're the, you're the, square peg in the round hole like yeah. it's just not a it's not a fit like i i, I tried screenplays that i i only sound like myself yeah. when i write so, and it's like i don't want to listen to me like that's the last thing i would want to you know pay nine dollars and see yeah. 25 people talk it's exactly understandable like yeah. it is it's understandable and it's like and it's weird because uh you know, if you're good at something or if you're passionate about something, you're always the most critical on yourself. Oh, yeah. So, like, I listen to these podcasts and, like, you know, my wife will come home after I kick her out and I'm just like, <laughs> God, I wish I didn't talk so much or, like, yeah. I wish I did this and did that. And, and it ends up being, like, not a big deal. It's like, yeah, you're always just, like, the most, like, critical and you always... It's always thinking about it too much kind of like hinders it, but then it ends up paying off in the long run. Yeah, yeah. Where did your first like uh, run with like taking... So describe like what you do now. So I I do uh, movie posters and TV posters in like minimalist style um, using photography of objects that I find, stage, and then turn into movie posters. And... Um, it's almost like, it's almost like, uh, product photography yeah. in a way, but it's, um, it's very descriptive. Yeah. It's, it's like, uh, there's certain rules that I put onto myself and there's like certain things that I try to accomplish yeah. in doing it. And that, that sort of, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a hard question because like yeah. I was thinking about it today coming home, like how to describe what it is. And the first piece that I saw from you was the Home Alone one mm -hmm. with the paint cans and the broken ornaments. Yeah. And uh, I didn't even see what the text said below it. I just, I knew what that was. Yeah. There was yeah. micro machines, ornaments, and paint cans. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like you're... I knew what that was. And then I started like looking through the rest of your stuff and I see like a picture of a, a revolver and a cannoli. You automatically know what that is. Godfather. Yeah. And then y you, you keep going a little bit more and I see uh yogurt lids and uh paperclip chains and that's the office. And yeah. like, and it's like, before I even look at these titles, I could see what exactly these are. Yeah. And it's all because of the items that are in these pictures. They're they're identical. And I remember like asking you because like I, I remember saying like 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 what like like where does this come from? And you were like, I find all these items. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and that's what like really like caught my eye with it. I was like, damn, like like yeah. this is so cool and such like a unique idea. And the home alone one, that's where I started thinking of it more. I was like, he finds these items, but this looks like it came from the movie. And it's like, where did that first come into play at? So that uh, the idea was like sort of two separate ideas. Where I like the first thing that I wanted to do was like sort of like a Tumblr or something where uh, it was okay. just food and movies. Yeah, and just do the first thing that I thought was uh, the garlic from Goodfellas being sliced by a razor. Oh, uh, that's the best scene. It is. It's my favorite scene. Yeah, it's the best scene because like they're they're in prison, but they're still like. Living they're all up. buddies. They're they throw the yeah. they throw the lobsters in yeah, there. Yeah, that sounds like way better than being in the real world. But yeah. uh, they, uh, it just seemed like the perfect <laughs> sort of encapsulation of the movie, in in a way that it's like if you've seen the movie, you know it immediately. But if you didn't see the movie, it's like what what the hell is this? Yeah, it's almost like you got to be in that club to understand it. Yeah, and so 
it was like, how many of those can I do? So the first sort of like five of the six posters that I did the first first time through were all food. Oh, okay. And and it was like the the five that I really thought like, yeah, I would do uh Kill Bill the Kaboom cereal. Yeah. Um The Godfather Cannoli with the gun. Um the There Will Be Blood, the milkshake. Yeah. Um and I still have the, never seen that. Oh really? I gotta watch it. I I've just oh, I've man. been I I was never uh that's kind of a spoiler, man. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. That's all right. I, it's not going to be a spoiler, like. Uh, uh, but there's movies that like uh, I have not seen that uh-huh. that that are almost like it's almost like a sin not to. Yeah, I, yeah. It's well, I don't know. I I always feel like watch whatever you want. Yeah. And like I. But there's movies that like uh, like I was on. I I came into Goodfellas and Casino mm-hmm. like probably maybe six years ago. That's okay. it. Yeah. And before that, I've never seen them. I always seen the dual VHS in my grandmother's <laughs> like movie hutch, but uh, I never like knew what it was. Yeah. And then uh, I watched Casino and I just became obsessed. That that was your first like foray in the Scorsese. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, besides for. Uh, Actually, no, because I seen Taxi Driver, uh, and then that might have been that might have been, and then I saw like The Departed and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as far as like his older movies, like I didn't see Goodfellas, and then I saw Casino, mm-hmm. and then I watched Goodfellas, and uh, I. <laughs> what do you What do you favor more? I I I mean I think Goodfellas is like a top yeah. three movie for me. Top like, three of all time. Just yeah, just like we're gonna get more, we're gonna get more into that later. But <laughs> I see I favor Casino more. But I I rewatched Casino two years ago, one year ago. It was on Netflix, and I, I was like I I gotta watch it again. It's unreal, and, and it's so it's so good. There's yeah. so much of it. It's so good, and like there's there's four or five shots where it's like I just like rewound it, and it's like wow, I can't believe there's like a, a tracking shot going across this like parking lot. And then there's like a, a steer head, and then you're just face to face with Pesci, and it's like, man, that was that was amazing. Yeah, it's like, and and I was never, uh, I was never like refined enough to like appreciate those like shots of things. Like mm-hmm. I was more like, I, w- I definitely appreciated like the acting. I remember thinking uh-huh. of like watching Joe Pesci in Home Alone, yeah, and then watching him in like <laughs> the Super and My Cousin Vinny, yeah, and then seeing him in these like crazy ass movies like casino and thinking like holy shit like that's insane to me goodfellas and home alone were the same year i know and then (laughs) i found out later that robert de niro was supposed to play harry in home alone oh for real i didn't know that yeah robert de niro was originally supposed to be cast as harry but he didn't and then uh daniel stern was uh was not the they wanted him originally, but he mm-hmm. wanted too much money, so they were gonna <laughs> cast uh, this other random guy. But nothing ended up working, and it, Daniel Stern ended up coming in. But uh, I just learned that end of it on that <laughs> the movies that made us that's on okay, Netflix. Yeah, I didn't I didn't watch any of that. Yeah, Home Alone was not home. That whole that whole movie, the inside mm-hmm. of the house, was filmed in a cafeteria. Oh, wow. They built the set in a wow. cafeteria because that house in Chicago, just the outside was perfect. Mm-hmm. Everything else was terrible on the inside. Mm-hmm. And it, it blew my mind. <laughs> it was just insane to me. And now that like we're older and we like could go back into the things that we loved when we were younger mm-hmm. and we could like kind of dissect, dissect that and like look into it a little bit deeper, I have such like a more appreciation for so many things. Sure, it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. But uh, those were your first five like uh posters was like the good like uh the well the very the very first one was king of comedy which oh, okay. um that's that's also like one of my favorite movies i i, I regret saying that goodfellas is top three because well, maybe top five anyhow it, it's gonna be uh, hard later yeah you know. uh but it, yeah so the the first idea was was the food and then the second one was i i thought like we were watching my wife and i were watching zodiac like i i was like i, I think you'll like it put it on and there's like a there's two scenes with they talk about buttons yeah and it's it's weird like the zodiac killer saying i want everybody wearing zodiac buttons yeah and robert downey jr is wearing a button that says i'm not paul avery and i thought like a good idea for a poster would be all these buttons of like period relevant like pins or or buttons or whatever 
And so, and then having one Zodiac one in there and then like one, I'm not Paul Avery. So it's kind of like there's the sea of buttons and you got to figure out which one is the Zodiac. And that's kind of mirroring the, the sort premise of the plot of the, of the movie. movie. Yeah. And then it's all like, you get the, the, the setting, you get the time period, you get um, character, you get all kinds of things from just taking a picture. And that's kind of where the idea of not really illustrating movie posters, but kind of like doing it through photography. That's, that's kind of where that, that started. And I started buying all these buttons and I never did a Zodiac poster. You still still never did one. Yeah. I'm still waiting. (laughs) Uh, it was a lot. It was, I bought a lot of buttons. Yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, it's a, it's a, such an interesting idea though, because like, how many do you know how many uh, posters you have offhand? Uh, I have ninety ninety eight total. Yeah, like that's that, insane. That includes like illustrated stuff, um, all the photography stuff, Pittsburgh stuff, and yeah. then but all told, like I've I've sort of retired some and yeah, just never printed some. And now, n- like for you to for you to find all these things, like do, does does your work happen? from the object like does the object find you first and then you get an idea or do you get an idea of a movie and then you're like i need to find this It's both yeah Yeah. it's like some are obvious and it's like it's like i i want to do i don't know like raising arizona yeah it's like you got to find that pampers bag yeah and and that's and that's kind of the that's kind of the thing it's it's like if i if, if if it's something that was in the movie i wanted to I want it to match. So if it's like the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Walkman, yeah. it's got to be that Walkman. That like one. It can't be. That exact one. And if like the Groundhog Day uh, alarm, clock. alarm clock is the same model, yeah. it can't be like a look, like a, a vague look like it. See, I respect that. I love that. Because it is like a thing where, uh, like you, the, I got knockoff Lebowski sunglasses. That That was one of the things. And, a guy did was like those aren't the real glasses, man. Oh, really? I like the idea, but it's not the those aren't the glasses. <laughs> and like, so if you do that, you're gonna hear from like the real the, the big Groundhog Day head where it's like <laughs> you didn't get that right, man. Oh man, the big lost a little respect for you, <laughs> but like yeah. So and and so like I I don't know. It, it's like I I try to put like some sort of constriction on myself because I I am like cognizant of the fact that it's like you're just taking pictures of stuff yeah and like people people will cut like they won't come up to me but the like i i think that some people will be like what the hell is this you're taking pictures of stuff and like keep walking and that's fine uh but like i really try to put limitations on on myself so like there's people that make like iron man hearts or whatever yeah and so what i don't want to do is like take somebody else's art uh, and take a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then it becomes my art. So it's like any sort of like mass produced replica, um, like uh, the Back to the Future two uh sports almanac, they yeah, make that. And yeah. it's like at the end of the day you could just take a picture of that and Or like Home Alone two, the talk back, like the it, Well, if I could find one of those, man. <laughs> Dude, I have one. <laughs> do you I have one? I got, in a, my, I got a in somebody at a house. show was like, Do you do you have Home Alone two? And I was like, no. I, I swear to God, I have it in my. Uh, I have this big about. ass, like industrial sized garbage can in my parents' <laughs> house that's just filled with like toys. I still have that thing. A lot in there. of yeah, the, like we we'll have to link up with that. So, uh, and and back to your like the like going to Trader Jack's or or like a flea market or whatever. Yeah. Like sometimes it's like you you see something. Yeah, it's like that that'll do it that's where i figure most of like uh a lot of your things come from is like you have to be like a low-key like a thrifter a lot of yeah a lot of ebay uh oh that's a good point too paul yeah um wait what was the second one saint vincent de paul like the thrift stores oh um, okay red white and blue yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. um and it's and like i kind of have a i have like notebooks of just ideas of of stuff that yeah it's like eventually if if i could find it some of them are like probably impossible but yeah what like, do you think's like the most sought after thing you're looking for um like the hardest to find yeah um that you want but man there's a uh i want a harmonium like the in punch drunk love there's that i never seen it oh man it's another paul thomas anderson man. i know it is uh there's like a, a like a piano looking thing uh that's like i that you could get them but one, they're really expensive, and then two, they're. I was just gonna say, can I ask you what the most you've ever spent on an item is? The um, yeah, the the Guardians of the Galaxy 
Walkman was three hundred fifty dollars. Holy shit! But I I resold it immediately. Yeah. And I bought it. <laughs> I bought that. I bought that freaking thing <coughs> right before Halloween too. So they it was like yeah, the price prime, was jacked up. Prime. So man, that's crazy. Yeah, but the <laughs> the uh, the raising Arizona diapers. That, that's like a nineteen eighties bag of diapers. Yeah, those were. To get like the the sealed pack, it was four hundred dollars. There is a market for vintage diapers. Holy shit! And like there were like two on eBay every once in a while. And then I found a guy selling the bags, like the empty. Yeah, the empty of them. And I just filled it with my son's diapers. Yeah, and that cost sixty dollars. Wow, still a lot. Yeah, but that's still an original. Still too much. Yeah, that still has that uh, that integrity, like of yeah. of it being the original thing. Yeah, and I can appreciate that. <laughs> that's why I think that that's that's cool. I would love. I'm going to be honest. I would love to make that Home Alone two happen for you. All right, man. With that thing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that this week whenever I go home. That'll be so <laughs> funny. Uh, but I, I think that uh, I think that another one is so cool is. I, like there's a lot of yours that you have that it just have like one or two items in there, mm-hmm. but I love like the like you have a Seinfeld one yeah. that has like everything. Even though I'm not a huge Seinfeld guy, I've yeah. probably watched five episodes, but like I know the I know like what it is yeah. and like the Breaking Bad one. I remember seeing yours in the beginning. Before I watched Breaking Bad, okay. I watched like one season of it in the beginning, <laughs> and I knew that there was like the the blue meth. I knew that uh, uh, what else did you have in there from the show? The cigarette, the crumbled up cigarette. There's the yeah the the flip cigarette, the yeah. leaves of grass, yeah, uh, lily of the valley, um, plant tag, yeah, the plant tag, um, the eyeball. I knew about the eyeball from the stuffed animal and the uh, the. Uh, Poyos Hermanos yeah. bags. So and then- that I knew of them things in yeah. the show because I got to like episode or I got to like season two mm-hmm. and then like I didn't know, you know, the Walt Whitman. I didn't yeah. know the the uh, the plant tag. I didn't know that shit. And then I remember just looking whenever I seen you again uh, this past like whenever that was and looking through and like the Breaking Bad one. Whenever I scrolled through that, because uh-huh. I just finished Breaking okay. Bad, me and you were talking about yeah. El Camino, I think. Yeah. Um, and I was like, damn, like this is literally the exact thing. And it was so <laughs> fresh on my mind. And I remember thinking, yeah. like, damn, that's so crazy. They're all they're all like totems of people that have died because yeah. of Walt. That's so cool. Yeah, thank you. That's it. That and and like like I said, those are uh that's that's the kind of shit that like sticks in my mind with it. Yeah. So how long have you been like when was that? Like when did you start them first ones? So that was two thousand and fifteen. I had I opened an Etsy shop in twenty thirteen doing like photography yeah. here and there, but it it really wasn't much of much of anything. Yeah. And then I I I always had in my mind like I'd I'd love to do ever since I saw the first like experience of like alternative movie posters. Yeah. And sort of what like um certain artists were doing it was like i i always had that in my mind so i i started doing i started giving those a shot in 2015 and then i probably did like six just right in a row of that's wild of like first ideas that i had i i just started buying all the stuff i needed and finding that stuff and and going from there now where does the photography end of it come into play like did you learn that in school like um i i took like a photography class in uh in college but it, it's mostly self-taught and the yeah. first ones were all iphone pictures oh yeah yeah i mean they look good <laughs> thanks man. they definitely look good because uh they're all like based off of like it's a white background yeah it's a white uh it's a white board that i got from um an ikea shelf that i had i just took the i took the shelf out yeah and um and then i started just buying bigger boards in their like scratch and dent uh section wow. of ikea yeah that's I just really got cool new ones. i retired my I retired the originals a couple weeks ago, and it was it was semi emotional. It was like <laughs> we went through a lot, but I at that point I started drilling holes in them, and yeah, uh, I got like blue smoke all over them. Yeah, yeah, stuff. from the from the uh, RV. Yeah, the RV. How did you make the blue smoke? the The blue smoke was a so I found the RV, and then uh, that was a 
that was a Trader Jack's RV. Really? Yeah. And then uh, I got, um, it's like for gender reveal parties. Uh, there, there's, okay. uh, it was a pack of pink smoke and a pack of blue smoke. Yeah. And so I, I put the. I put the blue smoke. They they had like all these warnings, like you got to run away. Don't hold this in your hand. So I like put it in a in an old metal thermos. Yeah. I, I ran the fuse out, and then I put like a straw to like pipe to sort of make a chimney. Oh wow! And then I drilled a hole in the board, and then just work the work the straw up, and then just put it right <laughs> right behind it, and then just kind of pipe the smoke through. And Damn! It, I it was one of those like a lot of times I just. <laughs> start doing it yeah. without much thought and it's like i hope this works yeah like that's really cool and uh and it worked and it was like it looks dope thanks man i was looking through all yours today <laughs> because uh i wanted to, like i'm gonna post i, I want to post probably like five of them sure five different ones just to like uh so um so people could like kind of see what it is i thought that one was so cool because like it looked like i was curious on how that happened yeah and then uh you know, it's 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 interesting how you how you like place things and how you like kind of kind of do things. You said you were drilling holes holes in everything and boards. Is that to like like to manipulate it how you need to for the photo? Yeah. So I try to do I try to do like minimal yeah uh, Photoshop. Yeah. Like everything that happens, I want it to like either make it or like manipulate it to to make it seem like it's happening. So like. Um, the, like the Avengers, uh, end game one. Yeah. Um, I just drilled six holes in, and then, uh, these people that I do shows with, uh, Keystone Crystals, they, I like went to the guy and I was like, how, if I were to make infinity stones, like how would I go about that? And he was like, I, I like this, I like this project that, yeah. that, that you're sending me on. And, and he like delivered like next, next month, he, next show we had together, he came, he was like, I got him. Wow. And so he like uh he gave me like six stones and then I I drilled holes and then I blasted this huge like bright white studio light through and then that was like powerful enough to like create a luminance and then I put um I just changed the the color of the light. Wow. And I just put like a filter over it and and kind of drew it out in Photoshop a little bit but that's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that's that's kind of the most fun thing is figuring it out figuring it out and when it works it's like it it's, worked it's satisfying and then when it doesn't it's like god this is this is miserable now do you have just like a little setup in your house yeah i, I do most of it outside i have like a light box but uh, I, okay. I like the sun man yeah the sun is definitely it's i always have people over on mondays to yeah. uh to do recordings and like when we take photos after i always hate the light in there so yeah. like i ended up just getting my wife's makeup light and it ended up helping <laughs> it out um so while you're doing these photos, like have you have you started some where you've wanted to complete that project, but you just you stopped? Yeah. Like um, what? So I did a I did a 21 Jump Street uh, that just didn't work out, and then I did a Black Swan. Like I've been trying to do a Black Swan one for so long. Yeah. And I got a I got a um, ballerina music box. Oh uh, yeah. And then I set I set fire like inside it so that this ballerina is kind of spinning like in flames. Yeah. And it was like mostly plastic. And I, I ended up like wanting to pass out <laughs> in the period of doing it, but it was like too bright to really get the flames. Yeah. And it just didn't look, it wasn't, it, it wasn't good. Yeah. You didn't want to like put it out. And that was a, yeah. And that was like a one shot because the ballerina just melted over uh. and the whole thing just, I had to like put water on it to put the fire out <laughs> and stuff. So that's, like, I mean, that got to be a little bit discouraging. Yeah, but for the most part, I, I they they mostly uh, there's there's only been a few that just never made it anywhere. There's there's a few that I've like printed and then just thought like, all right, the time's passed. We're gonna yeah put this one out to pasture. But um, <laughs> I mean, that's cool though. It's so I mean, whenever whenever are you pretty like actively watching movies? Like, do you still keep up and watch all kinds less, of shit? Less now. I mean, we have a, a two year old. Oh who's... yeah. You did say you had a kid. <laughs> so like, oh, that's true. I'm watching stuff in the, on the margins of my day. That's true. Um, that gotta be a little bit harder, but yeah, it's so like, I've, I've only made it out a couple, maybe like five or six times of the movies this year. Yeah. Um, I but, stopped going to the movies that much. Really? I, I love it. But yeah. like, uh, 
you know, honestly, the people fucking they they ruin it for they me. They ruin it. Like like it's the one day I was there and like the guy next to me, we were watching a horror movie. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been. Uh, I I don't know. It was uh, the hell was it? It was the the new A twenty four movie midsummer oh okay uh, yeah and this dude was just texting right next to me <laughs> and like the movie is like bright and everything yeah. like that and it's like very beautiful yeah. and like you know i'm trying to like pay attention to the details yeah. but like the dude just like is texting and it like it kills me yeah and it's almost like i don't even want to deal with it did did you like midsummer i did yeah yeah it was very slow and like uh i i, I don't know i'm 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 hit or miss because i'm not a big a24 guy it's okay. like I, I I like their movies, but like some movies, I just I hated. Like uh, like was it called Good Boy with Robert Pattinson? Good time. Good time. Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, no. I, I thought it was, and and you loved it. I'm sure. I, 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 I have I a poster for it. Yeah. Oh, I just I did not like it. It was I, like I could understand that. I it was like a panic attack for me. Uh, yeah, and that's why I prefer Casino over Goodfellas. Goodfellas makes me feel like the whole second half where henry is just like a cokehead and yeah. he's like looking just at the, the the helicopters yeah. like i it literally gives me anxiety yeah palpitations yeah and i'm yeah. just like god and like good time i just didn't think that like i just did not think that like maybe i was missing things it's no not, it's, it's it's like a it's it's a total uh there's no one that i argue with more than my one of my best friends, Ryan, mm-hmm. like he is like, he's who I bought a lot of the posters off you for. Okay. Like he's, he's the biggest cine- cinephile I've ever met in my life. Uh-huh. The dude has over a thousand movies. He's at the movie theater every single day. Wow. And uh, he just watches everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, and me and him will always like go back and forth. And I was like, he was like, I'll watch it. It's real good. And me and my wife watched it. And I was like, I mean, is this trash or is this like, am I missing something? <laughs> And she was like, uh, I wasn't a big fan of this. And it's not that it's not like I can't appreciate artistic Absolutely. movies. Absolutely. No, it's a it's a complete it, taste thing in in And I love Robert Pattinson kinda. Yeah. Oh, I, I love Rob. Yeah. You know, I, I was a Twilight fan. I'm a, yeah. You know, I was Breaking into down it. part one, man. I was into it. I was into it heavy and I was like, <laughs> you know, I'll watch Robert Pattinson, but I don't know, it just it hit it, it was different for me. Yeah. I I it sort of yeah, it was like a um I don't know. It just won me over by yeah. the end. I, I mean, I love like Hereditary was one of, I mean, that was one of the better movies I've watched in a while. Scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know, demonic shit like that. Yeah. It's like very, very like. I still haven't seen <sighs> either Hereditary or Midsommar. Oh my I, God. I, a buddy saw it and I texted like, will this ruin my life? It's my, not going to ruin your life, but it's yeah. honestly Midsommar is, is worth it just to see the cinematography. It's so beautiful, like uh, seeing it on screen. Like it's all, it's it's a horror movie, but mm-hmm. it's not it's not your typical horror movie. But it's like the most beautiful place you could ever be in your life. I got questions about having a poster for it, and like I thought, what? like for Midsommar. What do you mean question? Oh, if you if you were people, gonna make people people yeah people ask me yeah. and I my wife can make the hell out of a flower crown yeah. And I know that that I know that there's flower crowns. Flower so crowns. I gotta watch it to see. Does this play a flower role? crown? Is there a piece way of pie, it? maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's worth I love, watching. I love using pie, so that'll be good. Ah, uh, it's a little bit weird in this movie. Yeah, uh, it, <laughs> okay. it's it's definitely worth seeing. Hereditary, honestly, though, if uh, like that was incredible, but like, uh, it comes at night. Like mm-hmm. I thought that was good, but like. I didn't think it was anything like crazy. Mm-hmm. The witch I thought was good, mm-hmm. uh, but I know a lot of people that didn't like that either. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's almost like on a it's it's on a time to time basis. Like yeah. I just gotta watch it. There's, and it. I mean, there's there's like um, yeah, there's people that rub like directors and just movies that just I, I don't connect. Yeah, I don't, yeah. It's, some sh- some shit is weird. Like yeah. I loved Green Room. Did you watch yeah, that? Yeah, Green Room. Yeah. I thought that that was such like, a cool idea of it. Yeah. Because like... You that, know, was ter- that was terrifying. Terrifying. terrifying yeah. Because that feels so realistic. Felt, yeah. Uh, Anton Yalkin. He, like, he was great, man. A great... A he great, was great. It was great. And it's so terrible. Yeah. Do you, are you a fan of the Star Trek movies? I The first Star Trek was... Like when it came out, I was like, this might be like 
this might be one of the best movies I've ever seen. I, I, I still haven't it. watched them yet. It it makes me the the first Star Trek is is great. Yeah. Um Chris Hemsworth has a just knocks it out of the pot. He's he's in it for five minutes. Yeah. Creates it. The the opening scene is is Yeah, I mean I'll get I'll get around to it. Yeah. It's, it's so difficult because like we're living in this world now where there's so much great shit to watch. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh like like what are you currently on? Um in terms of movies or TV? Both. So uh, I just finished Watchmen last Did night. Did you like that? I I loved it. Yeah, I, I, I got to get in on it. I have not watched that or Mandalorian yet. I haven't watched Mandalorian. Like, so I have, of the stuff that isn't like the overlap of the Venn diagram between like me and my wife, Yeah, the, I have like 20 minutes to watch before I just fall asleep completely. Yeah. So I have to do like <laughs> one thing at a time. So like Watchmen was, was this time. Um, we finished Succession together, and that's what's that? That is HBO, basically like the Murdoch family, uh, like dramatized, but it is hmm. phenomenal. It is really, it is so like if you, I don't know if I've ever heard of that. If you like rich <clears throat> people getting being miserable, like it's it's great. Like there's no that's good. There's no person that you want to attach yourself too much with. That's good. They're all terrible. Yeah. Um, and I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of like terrible people. Yeah, live in life and like let's watch them. But yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is great. Um, Succession. Yeah, and then like movies. I'm trying to think. I started the Michael Bay Netflix movie. Oh, the Six Underground. Yeah, it gave me a headache a little bit. My mother. <laughs> Listen, so like I want to know. I my know mom where this is going. My mom called me and she was like, "Oh my god." Ryan Reynolds is in this great movie on Netflix. <laughs> it is so good. And I was like, really? Like it it looked okay. Um, and uh <laughs> and she was like, Oh, you gotta watch it. I haven't watched it yet, but like I can only imagine what it is because like me and my mom do not have the same taste in okay. a lot of things. Like she was like, Oh, I hate it, I'll come in now. Okay. And it's just like <laughs> maybe hate is such a strong word. Like yeah. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, uh, I I really enjoyed it, but like, you know, I, that that just goes to show you that like you just have to watch it yourself. Yeah, and yeah, kind of see how it is. It, she called me specifically and told me to watch that movie. Though. I I've watched it like so. I've I've taken two swings at it to watch it. El Camino. I've, no, no, no. Oh, okay. uh, Six Underground. <laughs> I am. I'm probably eight minutes into it. <laughs> I had to stop both times, and it's like yeah. At one point, I think an Imagine Dragon song plays, and then it stops, nah. and then another Imagine Dragon song. Like he just is like, "Well, the track ran out." We're I'll still be honest, Car Chase. I was a Ryan Reynolds fan. Uh-huh. I'm a, I still am, but like, I'm, you know, Deadpool was whatever for me, mm-hmm. and I feel like he's doing a lot of like, he's doing a lot of random shit, kind of. He's doing, he's kind of doing the Robert Downey Jr. thing. Where he just, just wants to be the, like a just anything doing the big movie. Yeah, yeah, just big blockbusters, yeah. like whatever, like uh, R.I.P.D. or whatever. Yeah. Did you see Adventureland? Oh One yeah, he's fantastic, great in that, man! Fantastic, he's really good in that. Uh, I loved him in that. Waiting, you know, uh, he, he. I loved him in Blade Trinity. You know, <laughs> I loved him in Blade. I loved him in Just Friends. Like he's a great actor, uh-huh. uh, but I just can't get behind all that. You know, <laughs> I, it, it's like I don't know. Uh-huh. I, I, whatever, whatever. I also have not seen. Uh, all the Marvel movies. I saw okay. up to Iron Man two. Mm-hmm. I saw the first Avengers, but other than that, I, I haven't seen them. I th- and I know they're fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, I think I'm probably. I think like Endgame is where I'm kind of stepping off. Yeah, and I'm I'm probably I might be good. I'll, I say that, but they'll they'll come on like Disney or whatever. Yeah. I'll just watch them. But are you a Star Trek? I mean, a Star Wars guy? Um, I am to the point where I like it, but yeah. like my favorite, I think my favorite one is. The Last Jedi, and that's yeah. the one that everybody's mad at. So yeah. I, maybe I'm not a Star Wars fan, <laughs> but like that's the first one where it was like I don't know where this is going, and yeah. I kind of, I kind of like it. I got I like that it's not just doing all the beats from the first trilogy, and it's I don't know. It's they, at this point they're kind of all about how hard it is to make a Star Wars movie. I hate way. I hate things that are just overdone. Yeah, you know, like I I was one I was one hundred percent signed on to fast and the furious okay up until like <laughs> fast and the furious five yeah, I, oh no fast and the furious five that's just, where i jumped on man i was like this oh, is- you love like the see 
you know, I loved like the street racing in the beginning, but yeah. once there's Ferraris going through skyscrapers into other ones, that was like uh, that I'm just first, like, come the on. Fast Five was like whenever they jump, uh, it was Paul good. Walker and, and Vin Diesel jump off that that huge like canyon or whatever. Yeah. Like half of the half of the crowd that I was with was like laughing hysterically. Oh yeah. And then the other half was like dead silent. Like this is this is the most badass shit I've ever seen. Oh, I know. And it was like this is the this is the perfect movie that like unites everybody. And like I don't. This is ridiculous, but yeah. I, I love it, man. I know. I know. I I get it. <laughs> I, f- I hold too much weight on the on the begin on the front on the beginnings of yeah. it. Yeah, it feels weird to watch without Paul Walker too. Yeah, I th- I th- I think at this point we're kind of. I was a Paul fan. I was. Yeah. Now, uh, so I mean, like, as you're doing these, like, these photos and everything like mm-hmm. that, and like creating this like artwork, like, when did it kind of come into play? You said you started an Etsy store. Mm-hmm. Now, did you have like success with that in the beginning? So the when it was just photography, it I wasn't too. I had one picture that uh, I sold like fairly, fairly regularly. Yeah. But otherwise, it was like a lot of Pittsburgh stuff where. I, if it was good, it was like people were like, oh, I, I should go to that place and take that picture yeah. rather than I should buy this thing. <laughs> uh, but like once I switched over to once I switched over to doing movie posters, it, it, it was it was more successful than the photography for sure. But it was like a, a slow build to um, to to kind of where where I'm at now, where it's 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 doing like pretty good. And, yeah. um, what really like kickstarted it was, was doing shows around Pittsburgh. And really? That's what, like having people come up and talk to you was like, when did that start? Like, when did you do your first show? Around first here? show was in, uh, the squirrel Hill night market in 2017. Oh um, yeah. I, I, I applied just sort of like thing and I'm, they're never going to take me. Oh, like, you have, so you have to be accepted into it. You get juried in, yeah. Oh, so, okay. So like I, I, I kind of cool. just did a, a search for like I had been to Handmade Arcade, yeah, and and thought like like the it, before sort of before going to like my first Handmade Arcade, I I was thinking like craft shows were like eighty year old women like making doilies or whatever. Yeah, but <laughs> like seeing like what people were doing was was kind of amazing, and like my wife was sort of like she's she's just good at all kinds of, like she she could do kind of anything yeah. like craft wise like she can she could uh crochet she could sew she could she sewed a dress one time she just like went upstairs and an wow. hour later came down with like a dress out of, what is hers uh ultraviolet she is uh she's got a shop that she just started called uh a bold statement a bold statement and it's yeah. uh it's it's beaded jewelry that she like she takes these tiny like tiny tiny beads and like threads them into earrings and stuff and yeah. it makes like patterns. Looks and, cool. Yeah, she's she's like the pro, like the most talented <laughs> person I know. That's cool that Ian's are both like uh, Ian's both are on your grind. Yeah, it's it's a little chaotic this time of year. It gotta be. I mean, it gotta be crazy <laughs> with two year old knocking over everything. But yeah, I, I got into. Uh, I, I got waitlisted for Squirrel Hill Night Market. Yeah. And then 10 days, I think, before the show, uh, Carrie, the lady that runs it, was like, we have a spot open. Do you want it? And I thought, no. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this. Like, yeah. it's too much. I had too much time. Like, uh, I don't even know how to, like, get the – put up, like, a, a way to, for people to look at my stuff. Yeah. And my wife was like, you got to you, you gotta do it. Like you just have to do it. Now at this point, did you have like inventory of like your prints? I had I had a small inventory. Yeah, and I had to make like a massive uh, print okay. order to like. And and going in, it's like I don't know what I don't know what what's I'm gonna, gonna sell. sell. Like, I don't know what people are gonna like. How much of everything to bring? I don't know. Like I don't know if people are gonna just walk by and just say like this guy takes pictures of just random shit like yeah. <laughs> and so like that first uh the first show was like people like came up and like took the time to like really look at like what is he doing and all this stuff and like they they talked to me and I I I didn't sell like what I thought was possible like 
in 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 my mind it's like wow i could sell like a hundred posters at one time but it was like uh i sold like a couple and uh i got people saying like i love this do you have parks and rec yeah and it's like i don't Ah. but let me think about it and then i got into the the next squirrel home night market and i did a little bit better and then i got into the next one and i did a little bit better and i grew my inventory by a lot and i started doing like I did a Pulp Fiction. I did a Big Lebowski. I did like a lot of the ones that like the cult classic. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the big ones that like I I I liked and I wanted to like figure out a way to do. But like this really got like my ass in gear to like to actually do it. And and that's when that's when like Etsy started started to roll. And like that August like night market, it was just like I, I looked at my Etsy shop and I was like, man, I did this was my best month by factor of like eight this is like, that's great so so the more stuff you have the more the more like etsy success is like once you once you get it like it the ball just rolls and rolls and rolls yeah i'm, I'm new to etsy because like i i haven't i haven't used it a lot mm-hmm. but uh you know as of lately like past couple of years i'm saying like i go on there for a lot of stuff yeah they have so much cool random shit on there yeah and uh you could find pretty much whatever i've i bought uh i bought uh I had a secret Santa the other day and like we had, uh, we had like some cap and he's a huge star Wars fan. And, uh, you know, I, I tend to take pride in my gift giving. Uh-huh. Like I take, <laughs> I take pride in it. And, uh, I put a lot of thought into it and I found this guy from like great Britain. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was called freeze frame or whatever, but this guy just takes these movie cells from film and puts them like next to like the movie poster. So like I got him like, uh, uh, four five and six star wars oh, cool. and like uh they're just in one photo and like each movie cover it has six cells under it oh, and nice. he loved it and i was like damn like <laughs> such a like a they have so many cool random things like i love the gremlins yeah i just that's one you should get on i i was thinking about the gremlins oh, I love and it. i was gonna do a uh like a a bucket of fried chicken and like a clock turn into midnight oh that'll be good yeah that'll be real good yeah thanks man <laughs> yeah i love gremlins but i and you know just search it on there you can find whatever you yeah. want it's very yeah. very bizarre yeah the, the whole market like the night market and the i made it market mm-hmm. it's like i think that's such a cool idea I, i've been trying i messaged uh the i made it market instagram the other day to try to get whoever it is on there yeah and they carry carry yeah they just uh, they just email me back. I gotta like email them back because I, I would like to like learn how that came into play because I think that that's such a cool idea. Yeah, it's because last year that was my first year going and I was blown away by how much cool shit was in there. Yeah, it's crazy. Like the amount that people do and in, in sort of the ways that they're, you know, like it's it it's like a good way for me to like find people too. It's like yeah, it's. Like, the type of people that are there making cool things is like kind of like my lane of like who I would like to have on the podcast yeah. and kind of talk about. Yeah. Like I said, your, your stuff like stuck right out and uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting to like see all that. So as far, another thing that popped into my head, you have these photos, but mm-hmm. under the photo you have the title of the movie yeah. and then you have the, the uh, the credits of them yeah. all. So like, where does that come into play? Like how did, like, like why did you put that there? So when it, uh, when I started doing them, the the first one I did, King of Comedy, I like I just played around, yeah, like for days trying to figure out how to format it. And what what kind of stuck to me was doing it like a, you know, like the if you go to like a museum gift shop, they have like postcards of like a piece of art. That's oh like yeah, museum. yeah, yeah. And so it's like. Um, it's It'll like say like the, the title with the year next to it. The or artwork, whatever. yeah, the artwork and with like white all around it, and then somewhat like in small print, be like the the title and the artist and the year. And I I thought of doing that, but then it's like, uh, like do you for the king of comedy? Is it like is it Martin Scorsese's movie? Is it Robert De Niro's movie? Is it yeah. Jerry Lewis's movie? So I did it with like I did like a few casts, and then that didn't feel right. So I did it to like basically the the full credits in a way that you could read it uh rather than being like just squashed in the bottom um it really pops thanks man it makes and, things like pop and like in doing it too you, you like you see the different producer like the people you don't really even think about that have done like different stuff and oh, that yeah. are popping up in different places and 
the costume designers and cinematographers and everybody like you, you kind of get a sense of, that's a good point. The people that are, that work on similar things yeah. that you would never set designers and, yeah. and everything like that. And, and, and kind of, it's, it's sort of fun to like play around with, with the form and, and kind of grouping people together or who do you put last in certain things. Yeah. And like for like the Marvel movies, I put Kevin Feige last cause he, he's kind of the, the guy, making all of them yeah but though he's not the director he's not the writer he's he's producing them and overseeing them so huh. like the, there's certain things that like <laughs> nobody will ever care about but like i, I like just kind of figuring out yeah i like i like to, to hear the yeah. the background of, of how it does that <laughs> what's your most popular your most popular one uh of the of the photography ones i think Le, lebowski seinfeld and godfather usually like really the top Wow, for the top spot. That's and pretty then, interesting. Yeah, I kind of have them in tiers in my mind. So like the the top tier is are those three, and then then there's like a second tier, third tier, and then there's ones that I just made. I made for me. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, nobody's really buying. Now, wh- but, which one that you love that the people don't buy a lot? Uh, King of Comedy yeah. is one. Uh, Good Time, unfortunately, <laughs> that's one that's mine. <laughs> what is it? What's it's, uh, it's the Sprite bottle okay. spilling, and then the. Uh, I, I got like I got prop money and uh, and I I did the die pack thing. Oh yeah, I think I've seen it. But I I couldn't figure out how to do the die. Like I didn't. I thought paint would just be like opaque or whatever and and not really be like the effect of a die pack. So I got the other uh, the other gender reveal smoke thing. Yeah. To do the die like I just kind of made a tent out of aluminum foil and just kind of roasted the the money like a marshmallow. Wow. And let it like kind of, and as I was like trying to figure out, I, I spent like a couple days trying to figure out like, how do I do this? <laughs> and as I was doing, I was like, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to buy this. <laughs> I think this is purely for me, but like doing that kind of stuff. That's cool though. Like really kind of like keeps, keeps it, keeps it going. Yeah. Like having some sort of. You got to have your own. Yeah. Your own, uh, your own interests and your own like like your love child almost in it. Yeah. It's yeah. like, those are your guilty things. It's like, like the, I, for the most part, I, there's only like two or three things that I've done where I'm not that into now. Like what? Uh, like I, I, I don't, I'm not too into like Forrest Gump. Okay. Not, uh, as far as a movie, as far as a movie, as far as like, it's, it's one that I, I feel like is representative of my taste. Yeah. But like I loved it when I first saw it, yeah. and like I know it. I and thought so it was a hundred percent real. <laughs> Whenever I was younger, <laughs> I remember thinking everything about that was a hundred percent real. <laughs> and then like Friends, I'd, I I watched all of it, but like it's not something that I'll like put on now. But yeah, I, I don't find the humor in it. Yeah, it's and then I'm trying to think what else. Uh, Captain America: Civil War. I, I didn't really, I didn't love, but I. I thought of a way to do the poster, but like other than that, it, it really is like I was telling somebody the other day, like they were asking if it was weird people like just flipping through my work or whatever. And I was like, it's, it's kind of like having somebody look at your DVDs. Yeah. And I was like, I, I used to always want somebody to just come over and just be like, wow, I like your DVD. Collection. That's why I, I tell my wife, my wife was like, you don't even use these. And I'm like, yeah, but that is, that is something to say. Like, those are some of my favorites. Like yeah. that says a lot about someone. And like my brother, he alphabetizes all of his movies. Mm-hmm. I do not do that on purpose because if someone alphabetizes their movies and you're looking for, let's say Adam's family, uh-huh. you're going to go to a, if you're looking for Donnie Darko going to D, you you yeah. skip right to that. Yeah. If those are not alphabetized, you have to look through every single movie and you see movie titles yeah. that you wouldn't have The first seen. one that I saw was The Nice Guys. The very first one. It's, I love I thought, The Nice Guys. Yeah, I thought it was a really great movie. Yeah, I underrated. only watched it once, so far, once, but uh, I thought it was great. Yeah. I, I definitely need to watch that again. But uh, I don't know. I, I love movies. Like I, I like... Uh, my wife is someone who... Was your wife into movies whenever you got married? Or whenever you got together, she yeah she I mean she's into she's into movies, um, but not like not in a way that's like like me where it's like this might be like a social liability yeah. for you. <laughs> she's into them like a normal person is like she likes what she likes she likes the the people she likes but like she's not gonna watch twenty four Marvel movies to yeah. be able to keep up. But she watched Guardians and 
liked it. So. Yeah. So, I mean, but she, she's willing to like oh, yeah. watch a movie and yeah, like yeah. kind of see it. We watched, uh, like, we watched Once Upon a Ho- once upon a time in Hollywood. I still haven't seen it yet. Oh my god, it's so good. That's what everyone says. Everyone yeah. says it's real great. We, we didn't watch Marriage Story. I watched it by myself and thought, was that good? It was. It was. I I came around to it by the end. That's that's one of the like I'm not a Noah Baumbach guy. Yeah, like, that's one of the things of like look at these terrible people. Like I wonder if they'll figure it out. And it's like I don't really care. Yeah, but like the <laughs> the performances are good enough where it's like I I do kind of I feel for these people and like. Oh. I love uh I love Adam Driver. Yeah, Adam uh, Driver's phenomenal. What was man. um what was the movie with him and Channing Tatum? Logan Lucky. Yeah. I, I love Logan it Lucky. It was unreal. Yeah. Like that movie was fantastic. Yeah. And uh I remember like It came and went and I didn't I I I thought I got short shrift. It was it was just like I did not expect it to be that yeah. good. But then you see Daniel Craig in it yeah. and you're like, Daniel Craig is this like wild ass, like prison <laughs> guy. And uh, I usually don't watch trailers anymore. Yeah. And it's not even like kind of out of choice. It's just like, I don't really, I don't have cable. Mm-hmm. And like, if I'm looking, if I'm scrolling at work, like I, I don't have time to sit there and watch a three minute movie yeah. with the volume up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I saw that and I was like, uh, eh, Daniel Craig, Channing Tatum, who I, I like Channing Tatum, I love Channing and, Tatum and Adam driver. I'm like, this got to be good. Like, it, and then my buddies were like, "Oh, it's fantastic!" And I'm like, yeah. I, "I hate NASCAR." And yeah, I was like, I didn't... "This." I was like, "We got to watch it." So me and my wife both watched it. We were like, "This is fantastic." Yeah. Everything about it was so weird and like bizarre, but it was great. Did you see Knives Out? Not yet. Great I want Daniel to. Craig, man. Everyone says it's Loved great. It. I know we were gonna go see it the one day, but uh, we went to. Uh, I think we went to. Uh, I think we went to go go get food somewhere though. But uh, we we tried to. The the point of it is, is my wife was never really like she was raised uh, in a house that always has the Western channel on. Mm-hmm. Is always has like old black and white movies on. Mm-hmm. You know, she she is a very old soul. Her mom raised yeah. her on like Elvis and shit. Uh-huh. So like, whenever I ask her, like, have you ever seen the Goonies or anything like that? And she's like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, God <laughs> damn it! Like, so me and her just kind of like rip through it and like see uh, like I kind of expose her to cool shit mm-hmm. and she kind of exposes me to cool shit. Yeah, it's like I try to I try to. I try to be more open now that I'm older and I, I want to watch things that I thought that I wouldn't like back then. Oh yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I like, uh, did you watch the Irishman yet? So I watched 40 minutes and I, I just want to not break it into installments. <clears throat> oh, you want to rip so through I, it all. I want to try to, I want to try to do it in a, like two sittings at the most so i might go back and like start watching it but i want to give it time. two sittings is a good we, that's what we did we watched yeah. like a first half and then we watched the second half because like the effect of it i think will be lost like i kind of know where it's going and i i think like just watching it like is five minute intervals might be there's a there's a good way there's a good like uh thing that, that was on facebook that breaks it down breaks into it down, a mini series yeah. and like I don't know. We watched the first half, but like I, I read some criticism saying that it was just like a slow movie. But like, mm-hmm. oh, I loved it. It's so moving to much. me, man. I loved it yeah. so much, and uh, I don't know. I think it. Uh, I think it's. I think we're just blessed to have Joe Pesci and them guys Absolutely. working together again. Yeah, that's the that's the last time we're ever going to see Joe Pesci on camera. Hundred percent, probably. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Did you watch? They have this thing called the Irishman Conversations on Netflix. I wanted Netflix. to watch it after. Don't. Yeah, watch it after. Yeah. Don't watch it yet. <laughs> uh, but it's just like it's so weird to think about, like you know, like to see how how like powerful them them group of people are. Yeah. It's like those are pivotal pivotal people. Yeah. But, uh, it's Heavy interesting. Hitters. Yeah. What uh now have you have you watched Handmaid's Tale? I haven't. I like there's. A lot of TV that I just I, I haven't watched. So I know, like, there's so much good stuff. I I didn't watch Handmaid's Tale, Game of Thrones. I like, was not a Game of Thrones guy. I didn't um, watch it. Like big stuff that like Walking Dead, just Ugh. stuff that's like too, has too especially much. too bleak. Yeah. Like Handmaid's Tale, it's like oh, like, it's I kind of like <laughs> it's 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 definitely <laughs> kind of live in Handmaid's Tale at this point, but like. It takes away the happiness that you have. Yeah, it's like you come it's home like from a, work. Yeah, and you're sitting we, on the couch. So and you're like, like we'll watch, we'll watch the shit out of Bravo, man. Yeah, like, I, I could. <laughs> like when I when I come home, I like I'm I'm fairly tired. Like I don't want to, I don't want to have like homework. Yeah, like I want to watch like Housewives of New York or like yeah. Vanderpump Rules or something. Yeah. Like I want something with 
like, brainless almost. I I would I would argue that there's some brains. In it. Well, not the people, but like you like that's not holding. Like you don't have to keep details yeah, yeah, on all yeah. these crazy you can do stories other stuff. But like, yeah, I I don't know. I I that's the kind of stuff where, like, that's the stuff that I didn't think I would be as into as I am now. Where it's just like <laughs> the, the the housewives. And yeah, stuff. man. It's like <laughs> it's a guilty where, pleasures. Well, I mean, it's like the it's the I can make an argument about it. I. <laughs> I, you don't have like thirty minutes, but it's the only show about rich people where you're you're not jealous of them. Like you're not like I don't want to be. I don't want to have any of their lives. Like celebrity rehab. It's pretty. I guess so too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like there's like an undertone of darkness yeah. to it, where it's like Beverly Hills Housewives. Like all those women are like we could be replaced. Yeah, we gotta like <laughs> we gotta get like everything everything fixed on our face and everything like there's just like there's darkness in those shows man I'm, yeah if you're looking if you're looking for it yeah <laughs> now your everyday uh like your everyday job now like you enjoy what you do yeah yeah it seems to be interesting uh, especially like now I, I think it's interesting to think about that like pretty much after i'd say maybe four years ago since now like there's not really film cameras and stuff like nope. that anymore. People no. people aren't using film too much unless you're like a photography head. It's always been old stuff for us. Yeah. Like since I've been there at least. Like I, I think th- it's been – they've been like going since the 80s. But um, – What do was, you see a lot of most? Like home movies and stuff? It, it depends on like the time of year and it depends on the – I you see probably like 50 – 50 50 i almost said 50 40 but yeah it's like 50 50 i think like and a lot of stuff is like i you don't even know what it is sometimes like it's just now let me ask you let me ask you like uh now just as a process because i have no idea what it would be if someone brings you like an old vhs tape like what's the process of like 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 we can't do so that's a different medium uh, okay. completely. So like we do like reel to reel motion picture. Oh, uh, okay. And VHS is like a, a different animal. A different completely. one. It's like yeah, magnetic tape is is different. Like has different properties and is weirdly like even though film was nineteen oh nine or nineteen tens. Yeah. Like that stuff has way more information than a videotape huh. does. There's there's so much like nuance to it and. Like we've only digital cameras have only recently like caught up to being able to produce what like an old movie camera. Yeah, like a, like the like how uh, Tarantino released the Hateful Eight on the thirty um, millimeter on uh, seventy millimeter. Seventy millimeter. Yeah. yeah, it's like that. Uh, I didn't understand like the impact of like what that meant. Uh-huh. And uh, my buddy who worked at the movie theater, uh, who was the big cinephile, he was like, "Oh, it's it's going to be insane." Yeah. And uh, it's did you pr- see it in seventy mil? Uh, I think. I think I did not see it in that, but uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Mm-hmm. I can't really remember. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, like, I would have never, you know, just talking to him about stuff like that, I just don't think about, mm-hmm. you know, you don't think about things. Like, you think because it's old, it's not the same. Yeah. But uh, it's cool to it's cool to think about. Yeah. Um, what did I, I just had one other thing in my head that I wanted to ask you about. Oh, so whenever you're whenever you're like trying to think of these movies and uh whenever you want to like create something mm-hmm. um I asked you I asked you what the what the most expensive uh thing it was but like what's like what's like something that was that was like the the that you were like hunting for that like uh that that just randomly popped up somewhere that like that you were just like kind of blown away that you found it and then it turned into like the uh the Evil Dead 2 recorder? Really? Yeah, that was like that was something that was like on the back burner and then wow. Uh a, a, a lady uh sent me a message on Etsy and was like, "Are do you have anything for the Evil Dead 2?" I was like, "I've thought about it for a long time and I cannot find the exact recorder." Yeah. And then that day I looked on eBay and it was just sitting there. Wow, like, man, this is how it always works. Like, I had an email, where I was like, "Actually, I found it, so I'll I'll get back to you pretty <laughs> pretty shortly." That's really cool. Yeah, and then, but that one was tough because I had to the so there's a um, farewell to arms book that he like puts his hand on. Yeah, uh, and that like exact book cover didn't exist, so I had to like re, I had to bake, basically make it. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, wow. it's, like that's. Uh, 
that was one that was one of the first times where I really like made something where I was like, oh holy shit, like I could I could make stuff and, yeah. and use it in here. And do you do that often, like making things? I'm doing I'm doing it more more and more. Um, and like I did like the Shawshank Redemption, I I did the I did the Bible, um, the cutout, yeah, and like Salvation Lies Within, yeah, and I I actually the hammer I actually cut that and stuff but really you cut the hammer out of there yeah but i had to use a, a non-bible because uh one i didn't want to like get struck by lightning or like piss anybody off yeah uh but two it's like the the pages are so thin uh, uh, so like i didn't think that they would cut so i used a different book and then grafted two bible pages uh on the top and then one where where it gets cut out uh, and then that's just cool. podged it and then uh the sides of the book kind of made like a, a little box and then just that took like an entire, I think that was like game five of the NBA finals. That took like the entire game <laughs> to do. And it was just a mess. And there's like is, little scraps of paper everywhere. Is that but, the longest one of your, is that the longest one of your uh, posters has taken? Like what's the longest one of them has taken? Um, from conception to like the, the longest thing it took to find was the Barbasol can for Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Uh, that thing was cool. Yeah, but the, the longest one to... How long were you looking for that? Like close to two years. Really? Like because they had... it. That one's actually like a fake safe. Yeah. Like it's got a false bottom and everything. Uh, but like they there were people that were selling them with the the old... That's the old Barbasol yeah. thing. Yeah. And there were people that were selling them as if they were the old design, but they were the new design. So I was reading every review being like, this this person's going to send me the new design. And I <laughs> like, I can't use the new design. Where'd you find it at? I found it uh, like a single guy on eBay was selling it. Wow. Yeah. And it was it was just like looking. It, it's not like every day I'm like searching for it. But like <laughs> there are days where it's scrolling through. Yeah. And, and just like constant like going through and That's pages cool. and pages and pages. But like... That that took a long time. The the Killing Eve uh, perfume bottle. I was able to find the exact one that they used in the in the show, but they had like a prop master make the perfume bottle. So I, wow. I I tried to make it as close to the prop master as what it what it was. So it was like an you could buy an empty bottle. It was one hundred thirty five bucks. I think. Jeez. Uh, I I resold like the really expensive stuff. I just resell. Yeah. Almost got immediately. to. Got to, but um, get your photos and get out. Yeah, and like, <laughs> yeah, because this could be a, <laughs> this could be a money pit. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, that's, yeah, it's like finding the thing that like uh, I always have like the the thing in the back of my like I don't want people to be like, well, I, it's not that I don't want them to like if you come up and say like sweet reference man like that's fine like you, you take whatever you want out of it like I have the. Like the film studies person in me is like, I want this to not just be a bunch of random shit from a movie. Yeah, this I is want what it, to it be is. Like thematic, and like I, it it sort of mirrors the way that I would like write about movies when I was in college, where it's like you find some thing that sticks out, and that's how you unlock the the whole movie, and that's how you like figure out the thing. Like the you start from a scene or like just a weird thing that's like why. Oh, I love small little things in movies. Yeah, like yeah. In Ocean's Eleven, how Brad Pitt is always eating. Yeah, <laughs> like stuff like that, like small things like that. I love. Yeah, and then like what, what, why is this in here? And yeah. like what, what can you do? And it doesn't matter if it's purposeful or not. Like it doesn't matter if like the director intended. It's just like what, what can you make of it? Like can you, can you make an argument based on this, like, uh, like these huggies and a gun and the pantyhose? Like that's super cool. Yeah. You got a cool story, dude. Thanks, man. I, uh, I I definitely like what you do. It's very very cool. Uh, so, like, what is like your next move? What do you want to do with this? Uh, I don't know. I I want to I want to I want to kind of grow as a as an artist. I yeah. think, and then uh, like I have. I, have I mean, some... as far as making different things. Yeah, and in, in terms of just getting better and and, yeah. and doing and like applying the. Like I did three Kubrick movies, not in not necessarily in the style of of the the ones that I've done, but they are using photography just in a in a different way. Yeah. And so like I I wanna I wanna kind of do that. I I have like an idea for uh, the Cornetto trilogy, the Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End thing. That I, oh, I love the Shaun of the Dead one you did. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be different. It's it's gonna be like 
different technique and stuff. For, That's cool, for the though. And Shaun things. of the Dead one you did was, uh, no, it was obviously a cricket bat and a shovel. Yeah. Those were full size? Yeah, those were full size. Yeah. yeah. It, it took, like, it was a composite of each one because yeah. they wouldn't fit on the boards. Uh, it's, but it, it looks good though. Thanks, man. I like how it's it's very minimal, but it's it's yeah. it's cool. It's That's the one that man. I gave my buddy. Yeah, is because uh, me and him were Shaun of the Dead and uh, Ed for Halloween. Oh, nice! And uh, it was it turned out to be pretty good. But all right, so this is uh, this is the ending segment. This is right. the exciting part of okay. everything. This is the the Desert Island. We didn't even. Jeez, we got so excited about talking about movies, we didn't do the beginning segment. Uh, anyway, so the beginning <laughs> segment we do with everyone is called uh, "What's in the Cup." What, 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 uh, what's in the cup? cup. Okay. What's in your cup? I, I have black coffee. Yeah, black your coffee. House roast, apparently. This is my house roast. This is very good. Thanks, I appreciate yeah. that. I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a hot coffee guy. Like, I like even in even in hot weather. I uh. I'm almost, I'm almost the opposite. I love really? iced coffee. Oh wow! I love it. I, I we were, we're getting, real yin and yang. We were shopping. Podcast. We were shopping yesterday. It was freezing to death, <laughs> and I got an iced coffee. My wife was like, "What are you doing?" Oh man, I love it. it it'll be like a hundred degrees, and I'll hot coffee though. I mean, I won't turn it down. Hot, I love it. Drink hot things when it's hot. That's um, Dr. But, Mad Men so that was the that was the first uh, that's the first segment. But anyway, the ending <laughs> segment with that I do with everyone is called <laughs> is Desert Island Questions. Desert Island Questions is a segment where I give each of my guests three categories to take with them on a desert island to okay. exhaust until uh, death. Okay. Um, so the first category, which obviously I'm the most excited about, uh, is I usually give people three choices of movie or things to watch. Okay. But uh, I'm going to open it up a little bit with you. Okay. I'd like to, get, if you could give me the top 10 of your top 10 movies. My top 10. If, if that's easier for you, if it's, because I feel like me saying your top three movies, is that, is that, is that easier to do? I, I mean, I, oh man. So it's a desert island. Desert island. I want to watch them. These are movies. You're going to be stuck like Tom Hanks and you got a TV and you yeah. get three movies. I get that's three it. movies. If I might, I might work it out to five or six. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. I don't that's cool. Like, okay, so Goodfellas definitely. Okay, the apartment. The apartment. Nineteen sixty. Never Billy seen Wilder, it. Wilder, Jack Lemmon. Wow, it's just a perfect. Movie. I love Jack Lemmon. Perfect movie. Grumpy old man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Those are my <laughs> what favorite. What was the movies. one where he's the president? Uh, my fellow Americans. That's a good one too. I don't think I've ever seen it. That was like ninety six. Huh. That was a sort of a grumpy old man vibe, but the apartment, uh, social network. Oh, that's good. Uh, that thing you do. Oh, so good. Uh, I want to say king of comedy, but um, bringing up baby. That's a 1939 movie. Never Cary, seen it. Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn is perfect. Wow, you could watch it over and over again, and. I'll do those five. I think I could stop at five. All right. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Oh, oh no, wait. Uh, I'm going to say heat oh. too, but I was thief or heat, but heat. Heat, like uh, Heat with Sean, with uh, Christian Slater, or Val Kilmer. Val I said Kilmer, Christian yeah. Slater. Come on. <laughs> Val Kilmer. Uh, yeah. Man, that's a yeah, good one. For just something that you could just watch every day. Yeah. yeah heat. That's re- that's really good. Um, all right, so uh, the second category that I'm gonna that I'm gonna just throw in a new category. What about your three top directors? Three top. Oh man, um, Kubrick, Fincher, Sidney Lumet. I think. What's your favorite Kubrick movie? Probably. Oh man, probably Strange. No, probably Strange Love. Never maybe, seen it. Maybe the, oh my god, it's the it's hilarious. Yeah, it's so funny. That's what I mean. There's so many movies that yeah. I still have not seen. Yeah, I uh, I'll get into it though eventually. Yeah, I'll, send you, you, I'll send you. I'll send you a list. Of I would love it honestly. Based on Good Time, though, I don't know if I uh, if I'll have the. <laughs> but I don't know. I think that's the only that's the only one that I. No, I wasn't. I'm, I'm playing it. Did you watch Doctor Sleep? I, no, I haven't. I it was just a matter of like I couldn't make it to the theater, but I'd like to. I love. I love The Shining. I love uh, yeah. Room Two Thirty Seven. Yeah, I don't know the number of it. Um, the documentary about it. Yeah. Um, that I yeah. Um, 
I could watch that. It was time. really good. I I didn't uh, I didn't really expect a lot from it, but yeah. like you know, uh, I thought it was good with what they did. What about it too? I saw it one. I wasn't crazy about it one. I thought it one was. I thought it. I thought it was okay because it had like a Stranger Things type vibe. Yeah, you know, I like kid montages, like yeah. the Monster Squad, Goonies, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's like, I don't know. It one was all right for what it was. You can't compare the original, obviously, but yeah. uh, it too was the absolute worst. Oh, was it? Oh, <laughs> the the turtle's not in it, right? Uh, dude, it was like watching the Scorpion King. Oh, That's wow. how bad. That, that was the thing that about it. One was the the CGI, like whenever yeah, the CGI, he the CGI is too much. was like it's is, too much. Dude. It takes me out of it. Where I thought like the the Tim Curry oh, miniseries, it was so way creepier because he was like a real guy. A hundred percent. A perfect example is like you know you look at the Ninja Turtles movies that they come out with now, mm-hmm. and it's basically a Transformers but with just Ninja Turtles. Yeah, you know it's the same Michael Bay like yeah. like all these crazy <laughs> noises, but the '90s version of Ninja Turtles where it's these people in costumes, yeah, unbeaten, yeah, cannot even touch it. You know, and I don't know. I, CGI is I'm not a big fan of it, mm-hmm. but uh, I am a fan of it whenever they use it right, like in The Irishman. Yeah, I thought it was great with that. Like yeah. they did a real good idea with it all. And uh, after you watch The Irishman and you watch that Irishman conversation, you'll get like more of an idea because like they didn't want to do that in the beginning, but it was cool. Yeah. Um. All right. So those are good answers. Uh, <laughs> second category. Do you read it all? Yeah. So three books to take. Uh oh man. Um. So it would be something that I read over and over again. Whatever you have to read it over and over. Yeah, again. I guess. Uh, Catch twenty two. All right. Uh, Grapes of Wrath. And probably I don't know, man. Uh, there's a there's a book now. Nah, I'm gonna go Confederacy of Dunces. I'm gonna go those three. I'm not a big reader, so I don't I don't know okay. a lot of what all those are, but <laughs> they check out. <laughs> they check out. You know, I'll allow it. Uh, all right, so um, uh, then another thrown in category. Can I ask you to pick three of your favorite actors? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, man, Jack Lemon. Man, so good. He's yeah. Um, I only seen a couple of his. Really? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I only seen Grumpy Old Men and like. You know the other ones, uh, like a couple other ones that he's been in. But do you, do you want them like historically or like right now? Uh, what about both? Okay, um, historically, Jack Lemmon. Uh, hmm. That's tough. Paul Newman. Oh. Um, the Lee Marvin. Uh, just like I don't know. I don't for uh, Brad Pitt too. Like I yeah. Especially once upon a time, man, he's phenomenal. Like, I mean, he's great in and a lot of the stuff he does. True yeah. romance, even yeah, down to like. I mean, I just watched uh, I just watched Inglorious Bastards again the other day, mm-hmm. and uh, oh, such like a a perfect film. Yeah, uh, so great. But like right right now, uh, Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out, yeah. and Widows. Forget. I didn't see Widows. Everyone says it's great. It's great. He's great. Like yeah, he's I would like, like Joe to Pesci watch and, and good. Like he's just like this kind of shortish dude that's like just terrifying. I would like, like to so watch intense. that. Uh, Adam Driver. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, Regina King in the in Watchmen. Yeah. Like watching that, it's like what? Like where are, are all the Regina King movies that I could watch? Because she is. Like great, she's great. She's wow. so good. Um, yeah, I think those would be. Those are good. I mean, those three now. Those are good. Yeah. All right. Um, last category is three things to listen to on a desert island. Okay. Um, like albums. You can pick albums. You okay. can pick. You can pick albums. Yeah. Okay. I uh, not the. I'll call you right back. Podcast? You can pick a podcast if you'd like to. <laughs> Honestly, I tell people they can pick anything they want to listen to. Uh, I would do uh, Reasonable Doubt, Jay-Z, mm-hmm. um, Illmatic. Nas? Yeah. And I don't know if I want to do three. It might be Kendrick Lamar. Good really? Kid, good Kid, Mad City. But- Big hip-hop guy. Yeah, but not solely, but like of the stuff that I I would just want to like yeah. listen to over and over again. Like otherwise, it would just be like sad, yeah, 
sad, <laughs> sad white boy music. But, I know. Like I, yeah, if it was stuff that I could listen to over and over again, uh, I guess like college dropout too, maybe. Yeah, you know, swap swap that out for like reasonable doubt. All right, but those are good. Those are good choices. Thanks, man. It's good choices. <laughs> uh, all right, so the second to last category is the death row meal. So you get to eat whatever you want from wherever you want as much as you want. You ever read them creepy articles on Facebook that says like what people ate for the yeah. last meal? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's morbid, but it's interesting. Uh man, my it would definitely be something that my mom makes. But what? Um, it would be probably she makes like the the my birthday meal growing up was pepper steak. Really? Just, yeah. It was just wow. I, and like I think that would be. That'd be what I want to go out on. That's good. That's yeah. good pepper steak. That'll, that'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, and the last question that I ask everyone is if you have, if you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? Um, man, alive or dead. Celebrity would be probably, probably Obama, man. I yeah. just want to. I just want to talk to that guy. He would yeah. be super interesting. He's not yeah. the first time to, that to, he's been mentioned. To to get like, to get his actual thoughts. Like, would you you record. would you would talk to him about him right now in this in where this, he is now where he is now? Yeah, to I just think get his like what like what he thought of it yeah. and like what he yeah. he held back and it's like man, I I just want to I, I just want to get you like unvarnished. <laughs> uh, but like, I mean, definitely. All four of my grandparents would be. Yeah, it's usually dead. people. Yeah, usually people pick a loved one, but it's yeah. like it's like I if people do pick a loved one, I usually ask them someone that's not like a loved one. Yeah, because I would like talk I, to my grandfather a hundred percent. Yeah, but like I would also talk to like Robin Williams. Yeah, I would love to talk to Bernie Mac. Yeah, you know, like just <laughs> random shit like Bernie. Yeah, I, I was. He, I like I love my I love my grandma. Like that's not that yeah. doesn't tell you too much about. Yeah, 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 but exactly. Like, yeah, they're like. Historically, yeah, I I I always thought, man, if I could get Obama one on one, that's a good answer. <laughs> uh, now, where does Baxter the Bear come from? Uh, that is a it's a uh, an Anchorman reference. I'm not like yeah. a huge Anchorman fan, yeah. and like when it came out, it was kind of ruined by like douchebags quoting it all the time. Yeah, but uh, I needed a name, like I was changing from uh my old etsy store name to like a new one can i ask what your old one was it was called falling beam photography which falling beam falling beam beam an okay yeah. and then uh i was listening to a podcast about jurassic world and they were talking about the uh the scene where the raptors are talking to the t-rex yeah and they were like it's kind of like a baxter and the bear scene wow and i was like what it what it, what's baxter and the bear is that a, like a cop show and it's like oh no that's anchorman I like that name though. So yeah. I was like, that's, that's it. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, full circle, promote anything you want to promote, uh, any shows that you got coming up. This is actually going to come out on Thursday. I'm, I'm wrapping up. I wrapped up shows on Saturday. Oh, there you go. But if, if you follow, I made it market, uh, at, I made it market at neighborhood flea. I believe it's PGH, but the neighborhood flea, which pops up in the strip district, and handmade arcade which is every year like do those man like those are you can't go wrong like if you're buying like normal stuff for gifts like you're you're crazy Dude, yeah like shop, there is shop so much from, cool shit shop from local like cars, did you see that guy next to you who uh was making them dagger fish it was like the handheld like fishing rods. Oh yeah, yeah. Super wild. Yeah. Such it's, like a it's just random people, like, thing. Just following their following their creativity and their their passion and making stuff that's like awesome. They yeah, can't it's super find cool. Everywhere. And they keep the keep the money in the local economy, man. Yeah, you might as well. What's your yeah. Instagram? Plug that. Uh, at I think at Baxter and the Bear. That's okay. it. Yeah. All right. Everyone else that's listening. Oh, and yes. Uh, a bold statement, PGH. There you go. Bold statement, PGH. There you go. Yeah, I got it in. <laughs> any, <laughs> that's good too. If you any guys out there need some nice jewelry, nice <laughs> nice beadwork, you know, a bold statement, PGH. Uh, everyone else that's listening, I appreciate it as usual. Uh, I'll call you right back across the board. Check out the website. You know, hit me up. Let me know what you like, what you dislike. Let me know if you got some cool people you want me to talk to. Uh, I appreciate everyone listening as usual, and I'll call you right back. <laughs>